Yeah. When you think about uh, the work that's been done so far, and I know it's you know it, it, it's relatively early early days uh, on that work, but when you think about the work that's been done so far and sort of how that's being framed up, um, do, are are you seeing the principles of surge manufacturing that that Kayla referenced that she described a little bit earlier aligning with the work that's taking place at R three? So things like m modularity of design, single use technologies. Um, and, and if so, like what what kind of major major central tenets of surge manufacturing do you see kind of playing out in the work that you're doing? Certainly. So, so we, we fully agree with with with, with what uh, Kayla described that having this um, a way of rapidly scaling and meeting demand, right? So so we are actually we are looking at that as well, uh, and that's why we are developing these continuous processes, which we believe that will be more productive. So they will have high productivity, so that you can produce more. A unit time, a unit scale uh, of the process, right? That, that that's one of the elements. I, I think when Kayla was presenting that, one question that came to my mind was whether she also means having like a spare access capacity dedicated for for response or somehow maintaining some kind of a spare capacity, rather than having to scale up each time, having some kind of a readiness capacity there, and. That, 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 that's kind of my, my question. Maybe we can get into that and, you know, in a bit. But um, well, yeah. We, we, yeah, let's talk about it right now because we, we had a no, we had a question uh, pop up as as you were talking, Zoltan. Uh, the question from Jay is: Is it possible? It's related, right? Is it possible to position excess manufacturing capability as a backstop to an acute drug shortage due to a technical failures at a plant? So, I mean, technical failures at a plant is, I guess, a, a unique situation, but it, it speaks to that, you know, ex, the the viability of excess manufacturing capacity and the ability to call it up. Uh, to, to meet to meet surge. So, Kayla, Kayla, thoughts on yeah. that? I think um, the idea of like process trains, right? So if you're able to take similar equipment and use it for a small scale and then size it up, right? Maybe even it's just increasing one tank size, but it's all similar um, capabilities. You're able to kind of move things around, right? You're able to replace just a 50 liter single use mixer with a hundred liter single use mixer. And you're able to Kind of fit that all and move trains around to be like all right we were making 20 now we can make 50 now we can make 100 and then you duplicate your max build out that was quick to increase into another whole set of train and i think being prepared and having potentially additional you know mixers that maybe are a size slightly bigger you're running them at 20 liter but the whole capacity is 50 liter allows you to kind of do that increase quickly if that makes sense yeah yeah, Z Zoltan, what, what are your thoughts on that? So if I understand correctly, Kayla, you, you, you're talking about scaling up as well in terms of like largest larger volumes, but also scaling out. So having parallel production Multiple. lines, right? Yeah, so, exactly. So lines. Um, yeah, I, that makes sense. And probably the combination of the two can be quite interesting to explore for, for, for readiness, right? And um, But they do come with certain trade-offs, as you can imagine, right? So. Um, for example, at least in my head, if you would want to maintain a capacity dedicated for outbreak response, right? For example, right now, there is, there aren't commercially viable products that you can make with RNA, right? Um, well, the, you, there are the COVID vaccines, obviously, but then these are being made already and the demand is going down at the moment because the pandemic is tailing off, right? Uh, yeah. so, so right now there is no commercially viable product that you can make. So, but if you want to maintain that capacity to make RNA-based products, the question is, what do you do with this capacity right now when there's no product to make? How, how do you finance that, right? And yeah, that's... I think it's being able to repurpose those trains that made, let's say, a clinical amount, but multiple of them make a commercial mm -hmm. amount, right? And then you're able to repurpose afterwards for when that surge is gone, I think that's really important too to look at. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that you have one production line at a small scale making clinical grade material, right? At a small, basically small scale, small volume, right? And you would then have multiple of those production lines, probably somewhat scaled, but also paralyzed to make a lot more vaccine for, for an outbreak response, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I was um, yeah. talking that's through too, and like being able to use the tank at that lower level that could also maybe be used at a higher level, right? Not sizing it to that max small volume, mm -hmm. if that makes sense.